again friends. Uh, this time we've got another organisation to add to the list. This time it's the Irish Council of Civil Liberties. Now, very briefly, uh, I was notified late yesterday that there was a public uh, seminar. Uh, it's usually exclusive to the legal fraternity and everything, but somebody sent me a link and there was going to be a discussion about the rule of law. I was thrilled. And um, Minister Thomas Byrne, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs or European Foreign Affairs, he was going to uh, lead the seminar and people were invited to attend. So, of course, I sent off, got the link and, um, you know, somewhat curiously, uh, at the start time at 11 o'clock, um, the, the Zoom meeting wouldn't open up and apparently they were having technical difficulties. Now, we can't be too presumptuous here, but I'm guessing that the technical difficulties had something to do with the fact that uh, once I got into the meeting about 15 minutes later and it required me watching the emails and picking up different links and stuff, that um, the only facility open to me uh, and at, the, at the time, because of course, out of respect, you listen to the meeting at the beginning to listen to see what's going on, but the only facility was to send messages. But the messages were being sent in texts. They were not being seen by the other participants. And there was about 50 participants, as we'll show you here as, as we explain what's going on. Now, I won't make this too long, guys. Uh, perhaps before I go any further, I want to apologize to the people who are trying to reach me directly. It's literally a case of there not being enough hours in the day, guys, okay? We're still trying to work on processes and procedures where people can help themselves more so than us being dragged into time-consuming projects that we often just can't give enough time to. So please bear with us as we continue to work with that. Anyway, we got onto the meeting. Uh, Minister Thomas Byrne uh, read out a, a report or a part report um, talking about um, the quality of the rule of law in Ireland. Now, the fact of the matter is, we do not have the rule of law in Ireland. Okay, that, that's just a fact, and we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, but he went on basically to criticize other countries like Poland and Hungary and the such like for failing to abide by the rule of law, while we, in fact, have a host of judges, senior judges, uh, with criminal charges pending against them up in our courts, and the whole system is just shut down to protect them. But we're supposed to have the rule of law here. Also, don't forget, when we sent in our petition, our indictment and petition document, into the Houses of the Oireachtas, the Justice Committee and the um, Joint Petitions Committee, they came back and said, the committee, eventually, after 18 months of lying to us, fogging the issue, prevaricating, obstructing, suppressing the usual stuff, they eventually came back to us with a letter saying, oh, lucky us, we found a little clause here that allows the committee, you're not going to believe this, guys, it allows the committee to deem any documents sent into them to have ceased to exist. And that's where we're at. Meanwhile, I get a letter from an administrator up at the four courts telling me that if I try to enter the four courts building, the guards and the security will prevent me physically from going in there. No law to, to, to say that they can do this. There's no justification for it. They haven't accused me of any crimes or anything like that. It's just like, nah, we're not dealing with you anymore. If you want to deal with us, deal with us by post, they said. So. I've been sending in paperwork to them. I send paperwork into the Court of Appeal, to the Supreme Court. What happens? It gets returned to me in a plain brown envelope with no explanation whatsoever for why the papers haven't been processed according to due process, according to the rule of law. That's where we're at, guys. Anyway, um, this, uh, this meeting, look, there were some interesting um, speeches made by a couple of the participants. Um, the, the, it's the usual stuff though guys well, what annoys me about this stuff is that they all know it's the elephant in the room they all know we've got this massive problem with corruption up in the courts in this country they know it because we've sent these documents to almost everybody that was participating there or at least to their institutions that they're part of you know the law society uh, the, the justice ministry all of the TDs in the country 
you know, uh, the Garda Commissioner, the DPP's office, the, the Supreme Court judges, all of the presidents of the courts and the Judicial Council, which means every judge in the land, and so on. The, uh, the, the so-called Judicial Oversight Committee now, which still hasn't sat and done anything about this wicked corruption. I believe they're waiting for Frank Clark to exit his post as the Chief Justice and let his sidekick, Donald O'Donnell, slide in, even though there are still criminal charges pending against him up at the CCJ, where they have literally just sat on them now for nearly two years nobody will respond to our questions what are they going to do they're just completely ignoring it. and all of this is in violation of the rule of law as we know it okay so anyway um, eventually I got to type in um, a few questions because I could see the way that the uh, uh, seminar the webinar was going first of all the minister did his bit said then that he would wait for questions but he didn't as soon as he was finished bang he was gone right? Typical politician, okay? And Mr. Byrne, you do know what's going on because we sent you a copy of our Criminality in the Irish Courts report. So you know what's going on and for you to posture on camera like that, as if you didn't, uh, it's just thoroughly disgraceful. I, I don't know that there's any of you left up there that have the moral integrity to be in public service. But anyway, that's another story. So I'll read out those questions now for you. First, first question that I sent in by text. A formal Integrity Ireland report entitled Criminality in the Irish Courts and the Absence of the Rule of Law in Ireland was sent under the rules of the Houses of the Oireachtas and in strict accordance with the same to all parties, including the Minister. That report absolutely and definitively proves that the rule of law does not, in effect, exist here in Ireland, with over a hundred officials and office holders, including 40 plus judges named in that report. Now this question was put to Minister Byrne. Can the Minister please explain why that report is being unlawfully ignored? Thank you. Specifically, how and why the domestic courts, from the district courts all the way to the Supreme Court, can, unofficially and without legal cause or explanation, ban litigants from access to the courts and refuse point blank to process legal papers. I got no acknowledgement. They just continued talking. Now, they told us that there would come a time at the end where some questions would be put to the panel. The panel was, of course, a select little group, four or five people who know how to say what's necessary and to do as they're told without rocking the boat too much. So I then sent them a message. Can you please confirm, Ronan, that everyone can see our message, thanks? because I was getting a little message coming up saying that only the ICCL people could see my message. So he didn't answer that. So then a man called Liam Herrick uh, took over and started to read out his particular speech. Now, Liam Herrick has the dubious qualifications of being a previous advisor to President Higgins. Um, look, I don't know the man, uh, but if you've been an advisor to President Higgins, you will have seen the reports that we've sent in and all of the proofs of criminal activity going on up in the courts, up in the Justice Department, at the DPP's office in Garda Shear Corner, in the legal profession, etc, etc, etc. And for you to posture on camera as well, Liam, is totally shambolic, it's disgraceful and frankly you should be ashamed of yourself as well, especially considering the fact that when I tried to press the issue I got cut off. So anyway, I then wrote this. Sorry, Liam, but repeating the same mantra over and over again doesn't make it true. We need to be honest about what is actually going on here in Ireland, instead of presuming somewhat hip hypocritically to judge other states' adherence to the rule of law while our own is in such disarray. The European Union's own handbook on European law relating to access to justice is, in effect, a guidebook for judges. Every single annotated paragraph in that book has been violated and repeatedly so by some of our most senior judges. So much so that criminal charges have been registered at the criminal courts of justice against several of them. How do we account for the fact that those valid applications, some of them lodged nearly three years ago, have still not been processed through the courts, even though they are supposed to be a simple one day district court process? Other than by accepting that we do not in fact have the rule of law here and that as long as we pretend that we do in highbrow webinars like this, that we are only fooling ourselves and the public, of course. So I then sent another message. Ronan or Liam, 
Could one of you please confirm that our messages are being seen by the other participants? Or are we experiencing technical difficulties again? Thanks. So in effect, nobody else was seeing these messages. They, they'd been censored off to the side. Then I get this response. Hi Stephen, messages from participants go directly to the host, the ICCL, and we will put questions to the panel. So then I followed up with this. May we assume that these crucial issues will be raised to the panel today? Because it will be very interesting to gauge how effective official censorship has been, even though we have sent these Integrity Ireland reports and petitions to all of the statutory authorities and published them worldwide. Including the fact that the People's Tribunal of Ireland was set up in July 2020 under Article 38.3 of the Irish Constitution, precisely because of the repeat chronic failures of all of the statutory authorities and oversight bodies that we approached to implement the law as per the rule of law. It is pointless, other than as an exercise in public deception and misdirection, to have webinars like this that ignore the most central issues, right? Please confirm these matters will be raised. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what happened next was uh, I didn't get any response and then uh, the, the, the host started to indicate that he was going to wind up. He put a couple of tepid questions to a couple of panel members and then uh, very politely indicated he was uh, going to um, finish the Zoom meeting. At that point, I then changed my profile picture from my wonderful face here to um, a, a snapshot of the criminality book, yeah, uh, so that at least the other participants, about 50 of them, uh, could see uh, the title of the book. Um, <laughs> within a couple of minutes then, uh, he was going into his final, Ronan was going into his final wind-up speech, and I started uh, I wrote this out. Now, I don't know how this is going to look on the camera, but uh, on the Zoom camera, everything comes out back to front. So I had to try and write it backwards and hold it up to the camera. So this is what I did uh, and, to, and held it into the camera so all the participants could see it. At that point, then, I unmuted uh, my own um, connection and asked them, um, are we being censored? Are you going to answer our questions? Uh, and then we had a little ping pong for about... 30 seconds where they cut me off I joined in again and said please guys will you please answer the crucial questions or put them to the panel boom connected disc and then eventually I was cut off now after the meeting I sent an email uh, inviting Ronan and Liam to indicate which one of them had cut me off uh, why they had done so were they proud of themselves being such pro-justice heroes in highly paid positions of authority etc etc um, I will give credit to Grace who works at the ICCL um, she contacted me back we had a few minutes on zoom uh, I tried to impress upon her that if the ICCL was just like all of the other institutions that are embedded within the state that their primary function is to protect the interests of the cabal well what does that say about the people that are working for them? Now, I raise the question because we are going to follow up and send in our reports to the ICCL and just see if they actually do have any genuine professional integrity. Because the issues we have raised are without question, they, they cannot be contested. Uh, we, we've proven time after time after time again that there is such um, rampant criminality going on up in our Justice Department, particularly up in the courts that all of these, and they are farcical webinars. Now, I'm not saying that some of the participants weren't sincere. I'm not even saying that some of the speakers didn't make some valid points. But we're missing the elephant in the room. What is the point of talking about the integrity of your justice system if you have the next Supreme Court justice facing criminal charges for corruption, for perjury, for fraud, for co composing f fraudulent statements while in office? What's the point? Yeah. There's no integrity. If there's no integrity at the top, then it filters down all the way to the bottom. Now, finally, guys, I just make mention of the newest book. OK, <clears throat> now it is available. Crisis Color Coup. I don't want to fall afoul of the censors. Um, so you, you know what it's about. What, why, what and how facts and truths make you think. But it's about more than what is says on the cover. You'll notice up here. This is the satanic symbolism. All right, that is covered in here. Um, 
the injectables as we say and so on I can honestly say to you guys I've this is the most important book I ever wrote but it is available uh, if you go look for it online um, but uh, I'm encouraging everyone that I, I did this for my friends uh, for the people I care about and love and also for everybody else out there who actually wants to fully understand and I, the, the term here is fully understand what is really going on here and none of us will understand what's really going on until we understand the nature of human society the difference between empaths decent people and so sociopaths and psychopaths not so good people why most of those people are sitting up at the top in positions of authority and power and I'll put up a, a diagram here for you to look at maybe if, if you uh, freeze the screen and and examine it you'll get the idea of what we're talking about that's in the book as well guys once you start understanding that then you start to understand the context within which this COVID-19 phenomenon has unfolded and more importantly perhaps what we can be doing about it okay so to the ICCL and uh, the people up there who are running the show um, you will now get your chance to prove yourself to the Irish public we're going to send you in the evidence of massive ongoing endemic criminality up in the Irish courts and we'd be very interested to see what you guys are willing and prepared to do about it.